this rhetoric. So the second data system challenge we're gonna talk about is the inertia of data. And this concept revolves around the idea that it takes considerable effort to do useful work with large amounts of data, similar to the physics concept of inertia. So a good example of this is ETL, extract, transform, load, uh, which can be difficult with very large volumes of data. So from my experience, trying to build advanced analytics is near impossible without first addressing the processes of data engineering and uh, bringing either your data to your analytics or your analytics to your data. Okay. So I'd like to share a story about my time working at EDF Renewables. This is over five years ago. Uh, which is a large renewable energy developer and owner. So while I was working at EDF, I led a data science team and we're focused on asset optimization. Uh, most of the projects like the one I'm going to be sharing today are focused on wind energy and focus on the optimization of it. So the project used a handful of measurements um, from wind turbines like wind speed, wind direction, active power, and used these measurements to calculate the my timer stopped. I got all the time. <laughs> so uh, use these measurements to uh, calculate the optimal direction to wind turbine to face uh, towards the wind. So as you would imagine, if you face your wind turbine towards the wind more often, it's going to produce more power. Um, however, go back a second. However, the calibration of these sensors is not an exact science. The actual process involves uh, basically using lasers, sharpies, climbing up and down uh, in the cell, and it was very hard to actually just get that kind of center point. So to develop our algorithm, we first needed to address the challenges of data inertia. We had two approaches. The first approach was a data lake design, so EDF had a, a data lake in which we brought the data to our analytics. Our second approach was using a custom API from the data historian where we brought the analytics uh, to the data. And so, again, this is from my experience five years ago, uh, but the first challenge we ran into um, was the data model used for the data lake. It was obviously designed by people who were not too familiar with the data and really designed it for KPIs. So, Every data from every project all around the world was stored in a single table um, for each day, which was great for daily KPIs. Uh, it's all in the same table. It made it very difficult to work with for an, a year-long analysis in which you have 365 joins. Uh, I also ran into the issue of cryptic data. So um, when uh, the data context was lost in throughout this long kind of ETL process that had many steps. So what that meant was uh, I basically had to have my own spreadsheet to translate all of these data values into the kind of project names and uh, data labels that I was used to working with. And the final challenge I had was around data volume. So getting all that operational data from all around the world into a single table every day uh, it just had some challenges in terms of volume, and I, there was missing data, so not all the data I wanted to have was always available. So that led me to the second approach, which is to build a custom API to pull data uh, into Python for development and deployment. This approach brings the analytics closer to the data and addresses the issues of data format, cryptic schemas, and missing data. So this approach worked really well, but it also had its own drawbacks. So uh, the first difficulty was in pulling large data volume I needed for the algorithm. And to overcome data inertia, I actually had to reduce the data mass by downsampling my data from the one second raw data into 10 minute averages. So as you'd imagine, going from one second to 10 minute averages, there's a lot lost in that data resolution. So while my argument still worked, it really reduced the data resolution, and it was much more challenging to actually prove the effectiveness of the algorithm, to prove that we are actually saving energy versus what we had initially predicted. And it always had me wondering if I had had data, better data resolution and kind of the tools in order to work with it, uh, how well would my algorithm have worked and how much more energy would we have been able to produce? 